What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I know you are preparing for the big game if you are a smoker like me. Today we're gonna be making a double smoked shotgun shell, but with buffalo chicken. So stick around, let's watch it. All right guys, first things first, smoking a chicken. I like to do uh, whole chicken. You can skip this step. If you don't have the time or the energy to smoke an entire chicken on your smoker, just go out and buy a rotisserie chicken. Shred it down and do the next step, and I'll put a, bar, a marker in the video to jump to that step. But if you wanna get that extra flavor, that extra little jazz, uh, the smoked chicken, in my opinion, is one of the most delicious things you can make on your smoker. Uh, but now using that meat to then make your shotgun shells, it's going to be amazing. So uh, first thing I do is obviously get yourself a cheap beer can. I like to do beer can chicken in the smoker. Adds a little extra flavor, adds a little extra moisture into that chicken. Also, I'm using the Master Built Gravity Series 800. As most of you know, I love their stuff. Uh, this is running at 250 right now. What I do is about 250 for about 30 minutes, and then I crank it up to over 300, 350, sometimes 375 to get that crisp on the chicken. But in this case, we're not really using the skin. We're gonna shred it anyway. So you can choose to do it as fast or as slow as you like. Uh, we're not gonna be using the skin, so we're not worried about having a rubbery skin. Oftentimes, if you do chicken at a low temperature, you get rubbery, uh, ru rubbery skin. So cheap beer, raw chicken. This is uh, just a whole chicken. Getting kind of expensive these days. It's almost cheaper to buy the rotisserie chicken, although they are a lot smaller. Um, and then two things, you can either do Whatever rub you choose. I like Traeger's Chicken Rub. I also really love uh, Two Gringos Chubacabra. This is Cluckalicious. Um, I'll put a link if I can find one in the description. This stuff is actually amazing. I love their brisket rub too. Um, it does have MSG, so if you're not a fan of MSG, please note that. They do make some non-MSG versions of this, but frankly for me, I love that. It tastes really good and I'm gonna use it. So first things first guys, go ahead and just rub your chicken down. Um, basic uh, technique is just to douse it as much as you think you need. Now it's going to be on the skin, so we're not going to get a ton of that rub flavor in the chicken um, as much, but especially because we're smoking it for a pretty short time. And you're going to take about three and a half, four hours to smoke a chicken. Um, and you're just going to wait till that breast gets to 165 and pull it. You can pull it slightly earlier. It will be safe to eat. Look up pasteurization charts if you don't believe me. Uh, but you're gonna get different textures. Again, we're shredding this down and recooking it so you can pull it at 160 if you wanted to. I know that seems crazy, but you totally could because you're gonna be stuffing it into your Moscoli shells, wrapping it in bacon and smoking it some more. You're, trust me, you're gonna cook that chicken down. So go ahead and rub your chicken. We'll throw it on the grill here shortly and we'll get to the next step as soon as possible. Thanks. You want to get your rub pretty much everywhere on this chicken open up the the arms the wings get it into every bit of skin and make sure your chicken is kind of dry you can use a binder whatever you want um, but i don't ever <laughs> so i just uh go through all this sorry if it was blurry there but i think you guys get the idea on how to rub a piece of meat at this point uh, if you're into this stuff <laughs> so just get it nice and covered again this is going to add a lot of flavor to that skin and not a lot of it's going to get below if you do want to get into the skin you can come from the back and you can pull up the breast skin and actually this is a great tip and i'll do it to prove a point and you can come in here with your fingers and break that skin up uh, again cooking at home not wearing gloves today I did wash my hands but you can break all this skin up here break it up break it up you'll feel like a membrane kind of separate and that will allow you to then season all your meat underneath this and this is all your good breast meat <clears throat> so there all that is separated now you can kind of see in there well, you probably can't see in there but you can see i've separated that breast skin it's almost like a little cover um and i'm gonna go wash my hands real quick so i can touch the uh <laughs> the spice bottle now and then we're just going to tuck that back down when we go to smoke it so we'll put seasoning all up inside here and i'll show you guys that in a second okay <laughs> back with one clean hand anyway so again guys pull that skin back dust that breast down pull that skin back dust that breast down 
as much as you feel like is necessary. Again, um, that's really not gonna add a whole lot, but it will add some. And we're adding stuff later on in this cook process, so I'm not afraid of using a little extra seasoning here on my chicken whatsoever. So now that we have it fully seasoned up, let's go ahead and get it on the smoker. Okay, so first, crack your beer. Drink some of it if you choose. Uh, this is not my favorite, but cheers. No, that's not good. Once you have a half of a can, you don't want to do a full can, so a half a can of your drink. You're gonna use this in the smoker here. You may have to remove your top plate. So we'll go ahead and just go ahead and get that out of here for now. Yeah, apparently 250 degrees isn't all that hot up there. So take your chicken. This is a little messy. If you do have a uh, beer can chicken holder, I highly recommend you buy one. Uh, I've got two. I'll put a link in the description of the ones I have. I, where I'm at today, I don't have one. So I am just going to deal with it. Um, I'm going to tuck the neck here down. I'm going to make sure all my skin is uh, holding itself down. Tuck the wings in. And we're going to let it go. We're going to let this smoke for the better part of probably 30 minutes at 250. And then we're going to crank the heat up to 350 to finish the process out. All right, guys, we are at 165 or higher. I actually got sidetracked today, but I think we're gonna be okay. So we'll go ahead and pull this off, let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes, and we're gonna go ahead and shred it down and we'll get into the fun part next. So we have got to the fun part, well, the part that you might wanna have skipped to if you already did your rotisserie chicken. So we did a mixing uh, using the mixer on the chicken to really shred it finely. You'll wanna do this so that you can pipe it into the shells uh, later. So if you do it really rough, it's going to be harder to stuff it, although you could rough it and stuff it in there a little bit by hand. Um, I actually use a piping bag and stuff it into the shells myself. I think it's a much faster process, but nonetheless, uh, what you're going to need now is uh, a cup and a half or more to your liking of buffalo sauce. So we're going to go ahead and dump that into the chicken and pour that there. Then you're going to need I believe a quarter cup, again, or more, if you wanted to do it to your seasoning uh, of just ranch. You can use creamy ranch, whatever ranch you want to use. Um, so we'll go ahead and dump that in there. You're just making a basic buffalo dip. A lot of recipes out there for this. So this is how I've been doing it. There's that. Then I took an entire block of cream cheese. I cubed it first. Uh, you can see these are small cubes. Just helps the mixer uh, do deal with it better instead of one big block in there and so that's that then the next thing will be uh, two cups of shredded cheese you can use Colby Monterey whatever you want I think this is cheddar so we'll go ahead and put this in the bowl as well and that's pretty much your main buffalo dip ingredients I'm gonna go ahead and mix this now all really really good again and again, you can add buffalo sauce and ranch if you want to taste. So taste it if you like it, great. If not, add some more ingredient. This should get you about right. Really just depends on the size of chicken you used prior. So that's why it's kind of a variable. Once we get it mixed, we're gonna get it in the piping bag and I'll show you how I put it in the shells and wrap the shells with bacon and then uh, let them sit in the fridge. We're kind of done with the smoker at this point for a couple hours. You can let these sit in the fridge overnight uh, or for a couple hours, but you want that, that shell to get nice and soft. So let's go ahead and mix this up. All right, guys, through the magic of YouTube, that's what you're looking for. I'll actually hold that up a little bit to the camera. You want a nice minced, good orange color. Uh, again, add buffalo. I actually went inside and added some more buffalo sauce. Um, I just use Frank's Red Hot, Frank's Red Buffalo Sauce. You can add more, you can add hot sauce to this, you can season it however you like, but frankly, get it to the, to the level of heat that you like. I know not everyone loves super hot stuff, I added just a little more because I wanted that extra flavor. So next thing, see, this is the kind of the weird fun part. You're going to take a cup, kind of like this, a spoon and a piping bag. You can also use, if you don't have it with you, a piping bag with you that is, like a big gallon size Ziploc bag. So just a little tip there. So I got my piping bag, I got my spoon, and now all I'm gonna do is just feed this into the piping bag as much as I can. 
This is where it gets a little messy. So we're gonna push it down there and just keep filling your bag up. And this just really makes life easier, I think. Could do it the manual way of just loading up your shells. So once we have sort of the bag inside the cup filled, we can go ahead and roll the rest of this bag up. We can squeeze from the top, just like you're gonna be making a cake. I've already cut the tip off of this. You're gonna grab a shell, not break it in the process, hopefully. And you're gonna use this, shove it in there, and squeeze, 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 and you'll see It'll fill it up nice. You can come to the other side and get the other side out. The shell actually did break when I dropped it just then. So that is what you're looking for, a nice full shell. And I just have a little tray there. Grab another one, stick the piping bag in, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Sometimes you can get the whole thing. The dogs are already trying to beg for this stuff. But you want that nice and full, full size, nice and full. You'll, you'll be able to see it inside the shell as well. So just go ahead and go through and make all of your shotgun shells. And once we're done, we'll wrap them with bacon. It's at this point, if you do get low, just go ahead and put it in the cup, pull a little bit to open up that bag. And then as you start funneling it back in with the spoon, you can hold the bag and just push with the spoon down and you'll get it. You might lose a little bit in the cup, but generally speaking, I lose like a less than a thimble full. So you're just gonna keep doing this. Have a little snack if something drops out on the table until you're done. Okay guys, the next step in the process is, well, to wrap your shell. The reason why, obviously, is to get that beautiful bacon outside and <laughs> is to let the shell get soft. So you're gonna wrap them you're going to put them in the fridge for about two hours and then you're going to smoke them. You can go overnight. Uh, in my case, I'm going to be going overnight, but I want to get this video out before the Super Bowl. So um, you guys will see this video probably Saturday midday. It's kind of a little late, I know, but hey, uh, that's the way it's going to have to work. I have to go out to dinner tonight. So first you're going to grab your bacon. I'm using thick cut. This is uh, hardwood smoke bacon from Kroger. Nothing special. That is pepper uh, on the outside. I do like a nice thick cut bacon, but you can use whatever you want. I don't think a maple would go well with this, like a maple bacon, just because it's buffalo chicken. But anyway, you get the point. Any good bacon will work. Wrap them up, guys. Stack them on the plate. Avoid the dog eating the bacon in the process. And uh, we will get these all set up. You will go through a lot of shells. Um, all of that one chicken would have easily filled two boxes of these shells that I bought from Kroger. Um, so you will easily burn through a lot of shells with a singular chicken. So be prepared for making quite a bit of food. Um, I actually saved some of the dip for just having buffalo chicken dip uh, for the Super Bowl day. So I have half the chicken in the in the shells. And again, these are manicotti shells. And I have stop. I have, and now a dog has licked the bacon. Uh, I have uh, the rest in there for a nice nice dip if someone wants that instead of bacon. So that's all you're doing, guys. Wrapping them up nice. I like to lay the bacon out and do this. You're going to let them set up two hours, one hour. I even did it the last time I made shells for, I think, 30 minutes because I was on the way somewhere and I smoked them when I got there with somebody's Traeger. So you don't have to. It just makes the shell softer so you don't get that crunch because uh, these only have to smoke for like two hours. But anyway, we'll jump next to the smoking part, which will probably be uh, tomorrow morning, the next day. So you'll see different lighting. But hey, we'll see you guys in a minute. it's the big day and we are out here with our fully rested shotgun shells now this is gonna be a pretty easy process because we already know the chicken inside is indeed cooked uh, so what we're gonna do is just chuck these on I've set the Masterbuilt Gravity Series 800 to 275 degrees we're gonna use this top rack here and hopefully I can fit them all on side by side and guys because the chicken is cooked, we don't have to wait for an internal temperature. What I like to do with this is just 
uh, wait until your bacon gets all set up nice and I promise the insides will come out just fine so we'll set these all up I'm sure I could do this nicer <laughs> but uh, set these up here and this should take about two hours maybe less um, hour and a half two hours we'll let those all set up and we'll come back here throughout the cook and again we're in a hickory and Kingsford briquettes in the hopper today and uh, looking forward to seeing how this all turns out all right, so for those of you wondering why these might look like they have a little season on them, uh, before I did the cook, I decided to just do a, a nice light dusting of a pork rub of your choice. I used a Sweet Preacher. Uh, I like that sweeter uh, flavor now that we already have kind of a saltier on the inside. So this is just a very light pork rub. You can choose to do whatever you want. Um, I just felt like they needed a little extra kick. That bacon has pepper in it, but um, this I really wanted to have something a little bit different. So try this, I think you're gonna like it, especially when I put it on. I didn't put it on last night because it would have been really kind of almost melted into the, into the uh, bacon. This will give it a little bit more of a bark since I put it on late in the process. Oh yeah, guys, it's been about 50 minutes and you can see here, these are not quite done, but we are starting to see that bacon render and that shell get nice and soft. So really excited about this. We are getting pretty close. We may need to rotate left to right here just because I know the master bill gets a little hot on the right side here. So we'll keep an eye on it. Okay guys, hour and 45 minutes in. <coughs> get out of the smoke, get out of the sunlight. And I think we have just about what I've been looking for when it comes to that bacon. So let me go ahead and pull these off and let them rest for a little bit and we'll enjoy these for the big game. All right, guys, this is the final result as you saw some of that footage, but man, <laughs> really nothing better than some bacon and uh, buffalo chicken together. So let's go ahead and try it out. You can tell the, uh, the actual shell itself is, is nice and soft. Um, the chicken did not overcook in there and let's go ahead and go for a bite. <laughs> yeah, a little hot still. <laughs> I didn't wait very long. That buffalo chicken is is awesome in there. Anytime you smoke bacon, additionally, it's super good. But this is a double smoked buffalo chicken shotgun shell. Guys, enjoy the big game. Enjoy this recipe if you make it for any other time of the year. And uh, man, <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. See you on the next one. Oh yeah, guys. One last thing, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. I know I don't post a ton of videos, but I will be posting more recipes as the, the cooking season, the spring season kind of gets going. So please like, please subscribe. Please comment below what you think. Um, shotgun cells are easy to make, but there's a lot of different ways to make them. So if you made the recipe, let me know down below. If you got some other ideas for me, put them down below and we'll try that too. I think the next video we're gonna do some smoked sliders and maybe some jerky. So stick around guys and uh, thanks again for watching. Enjoy.